All right, everyone, let us talk about local extrema now. And so just like in the first video, we're gonna begin with an example. Can't really talk about local extrema unless we know what it is. So let's suppose there is an open interval, open meaning parentheses, an open interval I containing C in the domain of F. Well, a couple things could happen here. If f of c, if the function value at that c is bigger than the function value at any x for all x in that interval, then f has a local maximum of f of c at C. That's what a local maximum is. It's just, is there some small interval? Can we zoom in on the function? Can we zoom in to an open interval on that function and have C be the location of the biggest value? And we, then we have very, very similar definitions for other things. If f of c is smaller than every single other function value for all x in that interval, then f has a local minimum. That's nice, spell minimum. Nice try. Of that same function value at that same location. So it's local max if it's the biggest in that little interval, and it's local minimum if it's the smallest in that little interval. And then finally, if we have room, f has a local extremum at c if there is either a local max or a local min. At that point. So, dang it. Gosh darn it, I wrote behind me again. Well, we're going back to ghost Jason. So local extremum just means, okay, uh, like is there either a max or a min? It's just a definition that, that incorporates both of those things together, all right? So, all right, now now, now y'all can see behind me. Now you can see that, see that writing and I don't have to duck my head below. So if there's a local max, there's a local extremum. Local extremum just incorporates maxes and mins. Okay, that's pretty much it for our definitions. So let's work with these definitions in the next example. And you might say, Jason, you just copy and pasted this from before. I did. And you can also go back in your notes. So you can go back into your notes and leave off the example two part if you want. And I'll show you what you can write in a sec. We're going to be finding and classifying the local extrema. Again, the plural of local extremum is local extrema. And if you'd like, you can make a note and say, OK, these are the critical points. Critical points are in yellow. And uh, we can have blue be the local extremum. So let's think again. Let's think again for what local extremum are. Local max and local min are basically the same definition. It's just, if is there some tiny open interval for which this is the biggest point? And in fact, I'm gonna do a little trick here. Let's look at this first function. Oh no, I can't do the trick. I can't erase it because I copy pasted it. <laughs> oh no. I backfire. My laziness has backfired on me. If we zoom in to only this blue portion, don't write this down. But if we zoom in to only this portion of the graph, then notice that that critical point, that yellow point, is a minimum. For just this small portion of the graph, because again, if we did more of the graph, right, this would be something that's smaller. This is a lower value. If we're just looking at this portion of the graph, that critical point is a local minimum. That critical point has a smaller function value than anything around it. 
So we would say that this critical point is also a local min. Local min. I, I wrote the words in the backwards order. And similarly, right, if we only look at this portion of the graph, so some open interval, some small portion of the graph on both sides, an open interval containing that point, well then, of course, this point is also biggest in this small interval. It's not the biggest period, but it is the biggest in this area. This is a local max. And there's no other points that follow this criteria, right? You know, this is not a local min or a local max, because if we look at the graph around it, well, there are points that are bigger, and there are points that are smaller. Oh, interesting. Our local extremum, our local extrema, I get the plural messed up too, our local extrema just happened to be at the critical points. Whoa, what a crazy coincidence. Let's keep going. All right, so next one. Uh, this looks like a uh, looks like a likely subject, right? If we look at the graph a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right, we're only looking at this blue component. Well, our critical point is the biggest one around. In fact, it's the biggest around on the whole graph. It really is the biggest. Yeah, that's going to be a local max. There are no others. Any other point you choose. You look at a small region of the graph around it, there will be points above it, and there will be points below it. And that's our only local max. Next one. Right here. Same logic, right? This is going to take forever if I, if I spend a ton of time on each of these. So let's just talk about the more interesting ones. And again, uh, there's, there's nothing going on here. For, for local max and local min, because the function is not defined there. All right, next one. Yep, that's a local min. There are no other ones. What about this cubic function? Huh. This can't be a local min or a local max, because look at this point. If we only look at small things around it, well, there are bigger points and there are smaller points, so this is not a local extremum. There are no local extrema on this one. Okay, so this is a break in the pattern, right? In the first four, every critical point was also a local extremum. But here, this is a critical point. This yellow thing is a critical point. But there is no local extremum here because the function gets bigger on one side and smaller on the other. So it's not locally the best or the worst. The biggest or the smallest. It's the same with the next one. There are none. Any point you choose on this graph is surrounded by points that are both bigger than it and smaller than it. What about the next one? So this one is like a more traditional local min. Down here, again, we can look at same logic. And you might wonder about the second point, but if we look at the graph on an interval to the left and to the right of the second point, well, to the left, it gets smaller. To the right, over here, it gets, it's bigger. So there is no local extremum at that second point. There's only one local extremum here. And this, this next one's also tricky. Let's look at this point in this next graph. Let's look a little to the right of the function and a little to the left. Is the critical point the biggest one around? Yes. Even though it's not continuous, we do still have a local max here. The derivative doesn't exist. And this last one, well, you'd say, well, there's no biggest point around in this last one either. Right? Everything is surrounded by the same. But everything is a local max, and everything is a local min here. This is the super weird one. And you might be saying, Jason, no, 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 no. Jason, I don't believe you. Look, greater than or equal to. Ah, so it doesn't have to actually be the biggest. 
It just has to be at least as big. All right. So yes, every point on this line, every point on this horizontal line is at least as big as the neighboring points. Every point on this horizontal line is at least as small as the neighboring points. So everything on this horizontal line is a critical point. Everything on this horizontal line is a local minimum. Everything on this horizontal line is a local maximum. This line has got it all. <laughs> All right, and that's kind of a little trick question. I don't, I don't think you're really going to see that, but it's a fun thing to talk about. All right, so let's look. Let's look at this example. Let's look at everything that we've talked about here. I tried to give kind of everything that you could see, um, but, you know, it's not always possible. I'm sure there are little tiny examples that I missed. Notice that every single local extremum here, every single blue point we have is also at a yellow point that's no coincidence but also be careful because there are some critical points that are not local extrema so it uh and this is a property that we'll write down after this example but every local extrema every blue point is also a critical point for us to have a local extremum it has to be at a critical point but it is possible for a critical point to not be a local extremum. Let's formalize that and then we'll get into more details in the next video. So, uh, property. If there is a local extremum, so again, local minimum or local maximum, at C, then f of then the point c comma f of c is a critical point so again critical points are the candidates for local extremums local extrema sorry but not the other way around again not the other way around so be careful on that one critical points are candidates and the only candidates but they are just candidates for local extrema and that is what we will do a little bit in the more in the uh in the next video and then in the next section 4.5 we talk more about ways of finding these so notice right when for critical points Critical points, we did it graphically and we did it analytically. We're not going to do local extrema analytically until 4.5, where we use something called the first derivative test and the second derivative test. That's going to wait. You're going to have to hold your horses, keep your socks on um, if you wanted to do things analytically here. We'll do that in 4.5. Let me know if you have any questions and good luck.